All right, this is the pre-video for section 3.6 on quadratic functions. Uh, the skill that we're going to review in this pre-video is to put a quadratic equation into standard equation, which is also known as vertex form, given the general or, uh, form or possibly being given a vertex and a second point on your quadratic. So when we look at this, um, we need to just make sure we understand the definitions of what they mean by kind of general, standard, all of those different things. So the definition of a quadratic uh, function is what we mean when we're kind of talking about the general form here, the one that we are most used to seeing our quadratics in, which is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember where a, b, and c are just real numbers, and a cannot be zero because you wouldn't have a quadratic. Um, the standard equation form that we're going to try to transform or write our final answer in is also known as vertex form. And the reason it's known as vertex form is because you can easily pick the vertex out of this specific piece. It's a transformation of functions, essentially. Um, you have horizontal shifting and vertical shifting, um, also usually with some kind of either reflections or um, compressions or stretching. So um, that's why this format's really nice for graphing. So the graph of the equation y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k for a not equal to zero, because obviously you have to have a t uh, times x squared if we were to fold this all back out, so it has to be quadratic, has the vertex hk. Okay, so notice here that the k is the same sign as it was in the formula. The h is the opposite, and that's because when we do horizontal shifting, remember seeing a minus, we actually move to the right, and seeing a plus, we move to the left. So your vertex is always opposite of the h value and exactly your k value when you're in this format. And then you can determine if your parabola, a uh, u-shaped graph, opens either up or down if a is positive or a is negative. So if your a is positive, you have a regular shaped u graph. If your a is negative, that's a reflection, so you have an upside down u. Okay, so our first thing right off the bat is we're going to show you how to change the general usual definition format of a quadratic into this vertex form, and then we'll write the vertex after doing that. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to complete the square, which is why we taught you how to complete the square in the first unit. So there's a little bit of difference here, though. When we were completing the square and solving an equation, we moved that 11 over so that we could create that nice, perfect square trinomial. But if you move it over, you've got this f of x notation over here that's a little odd. It's not what we're used to seeing. So instead of moving it over, we're going to try to complete the square while on the same side. So if I add something to this side to make my trinomial factor nicely, I would want to counter that by also subtracting it on the same side so that it really adds um, a zero value. So the first thing when completing the square is you have to make sure you have a one in front of your x squared, which we do. And once that's accomplished, so if it doesn't exist, we'll factor it out. Um, we are going to then leave a blank for completing our perfect square trinomial. We'll bring our plus 11 down and then we'll have a counter blank. Okay, so remember to complete the square, you have to take half of the middle terms coefficient and square it, so that would be negative three squared, which is positive nine. So on my next line down, I'm gonna write x squared minus six x plus nine. Then I have my plus 11. The counter to positive nine would be a negative nine. Notice those two add to zero. So if we actually added them back together, you would go back to your original equation. Now, the whole point of doing this is that lets us factor that trinomial at the beginning. That is x minus three times itself, so that would be written as squared, and then we add the two coefficients at the end together. So 11 minus nine is positive two. So now this is in vertex form where our a is one, our h is negative three, actually, sorry, it's positive three, we have to do opposite of that, and our k is two, okay? So remember, whatever you pick for h, if you plugged it in here, it should make that equal zero squared. All right, so then if I wanted to write my vertex, I would write that this is at three, two. And if I wanted to talk about whether or not the parabola opens up or down, the a was a positive one, so this would open upward. So let's do one that's a little harder. We're gonna do one that doesn't have a one in front. And the first step, if that happens, is that you have to force it to be a one in front. Now we can't just get rid of something, so what we do is we're gonna factor the common factor of five, not out of all three terms, but just out of the two that are gonna make that perfect square trinomial. 
So we're gonna pull the five to the front and that would leave me with a plus four X in the middle. I'm gonna leave a blank for that completing the square step. Then I have my plus 17 and a blank to counter. Now the only difference in this process is this five up front is actually very important. So when we take half of four, we would get two. Square that, you still get four. So when I go to add the four inside to complete the square of that trinomial, I have to realize that I did not actually add four to the entire right side. I added five times four, which means I added 20, because this was pulled out before we knew what that number was going to be. So you have to think, if you were to re-multiply this out to try to get rid of what we did, that would be a positive 20. So my counter should be negative 20. Okay, then we take this and we're gonna factor that first part. So we have five parentheses, x plus two times x plus two, so that'd be x plus two squared. And then we have a minus three. So this time my a is five, I have to do opposite of h. So h would be negative two, k would be negative three, exactly what you see there. So my vertex is negative two, negative three, and this one also opens upward because the five in front is positive. Okay, one more of these and then we're gonna try some where we're given an ordered pair and a vertex ordered pair. And just show you how that's slightly different. Okay, so for this first one again, not leading with a one. So we need to pull out a negative four this time, not just a positive four. That would change the signs of both numbers here. And it also, remember, is affecting the blank that I don't have yet. Then I bring down my minus 13 and I add my counter blank on the other uh, piece. So then I'm gonna take half of that, which would be negative two, and square it. So I'm gonna be adding positive four here. So negative two, x minus two squared. Oh, sorry, skipped a step. You gotta write it in first. x squared minus four x plus four. And then we write our minus 13. Now we have to think about what we really did here. We did negative four, times four, which means we had a negative 16. So to counter that, you actually have to do positive 16. So it won't always be adding at the end. It depends, or subtracting, it depends on what your number is when you multiply the number out front times the constant inside. So my counter this time is actually a positive. So then I would get f of x equals negative four, parentheses, now x plus, or excuse me, x minus, talking too fast. This number right here, right before you squared, is always how it factors. So multiplies to positive four, adds to negative two, and then we have a plus three. So my a is negative four. My h is opposite of what I see in here, so that's a two. My k is exactly what I see at the end. So this has a vertex of two, three, um, and this one would open downward if we were actually going to graph it. So, and that's because it has a negative a value. So that is how you take uh, your general format of a quadratic and turn it into standard or what I like to call vertex form. And that was given as directions. Take that f of x, write it in that format. So that's why we did it this way. Okay, the last two on the pre-video are all based on what if someone gives you the vertex as an ordered pair and a second ordered pair on your parabola. So is that enough information for us to come up with the vertex form? Um, so it kind of is because we know that this is h and this is k because that's what always is in the vertex. I'm gonna write this other guy as an ordered pair. This is an x and a y, which in function notation, that means that's f of x. So if you write your formula for vertex form, which I'm just rewriting here, you notice we have every single variable we need except for the letter A. So we're gonna take our H and our K, which has to be the vertex, that's very important, and our other ordered pair as our X and our F of X, and we're gonna plug those in to solve for A. Once we have A, we'll also have our H and our K, we can write the final answer with the numbers in for A, H, and K. So first step, F of X here is zero. A, we don't know. X was the three, minus the two, because you always subtract, so this always ends up being an opposite sign when we plug it in, and then exactly your k, so plus four. 
Now to solve this, I would work out order of operations. So we have that is a one squared plus a four. That is just one a, so that's just a plus four. And that means a is equal to negative four. So now I know my h and my k and my a. So my final answer is f of x using the actual notation equals negative four parentheses x minus two squared plus four. So your final answer, you do plug back in some of the numbers, but only a, h, and k. So we use that second ordered pair just to help us find the a. All right, so let's do one more of these. This one's given to you kind of like they do on one of the web assigned questions. They give it to you in um, a format where you have a picture of the parabola instead of just giving it to you um, as a list. So here's my h and my k, because that's my vertex. This will be my x and my f of x. So f of x is two equal to, we don't know a, parentheses x minus h squared plus k, which is gonna be minus two since k stays as it is. Notice this turns to plus plus. So this is two equals a times four squared minus two, which is 16a minus two. Add the two over, we get four, and divide by 16. Make sure you divide by the number connected to a. So this reduces to one fourth. So I have my h and my k, I have my a, so I have my final equation. So this is one fourth x minus a negative one, so that'll be plus one squared, and then k is exactly what you see, so minus two. So that is the answer. All right, that's it for this pre-video.